welcome to Hot Weekly. I'm Jonathan. I'm Crystal. And this is Hot Weekly, and I just knocked the goddamn receipt paper off the desk next to me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and this is Hot Weekly. <laughs> hey, yeah. weekly podcast for the haunted attraction and haunted entertainment industry. Whether you're an actor, owner, or just plain aficionado, we aim to be a podcast for you. And our recording studio at Haunt Weekly Towers in New Orleans, <laughs> Louisiana, is a bit of a mess today, even more so than usual. Yeah. Because um, you just got done with another show for right. your headdresses. Um, and all of the stuff that didn't sell is in here, along with the stuff that you used to sell, like the receipt book I just kindly flung onto the floor on accident. Yeah. So, you know. Yeah. <laughs> it's kind of hard to be all haunty and shit when you're surrounded by flowers. <laughs> haunty mean, flowers! That is a thing. You yes, it is. You them. <laughs> but anyways... We are, in case you didn't pick it up, we're not the, the headdress show. No. no we possibly should be. <laughs> Talk about what we actually know. <laughs> uh, but we are Haunt Weekly. We're at hauntweekly.com, Haunt Weekly on Twitter, Haunt Weekly on Facebook, and tinyurl.com slash Haunt Weekly is our YouTube channel. Um, apparently, I forgot an episode. I got to go back and fix that. Okay. Yeah, you mentioned it to me. I forgot to do it. Yes. Uh, we, we... Got a, we got a heads up from a very nice listener. Who kindly informed us that something, somehow one got skipped. Yeah. <laughs> Which I bet it happened when we started putting them up. That was kind of a chaotic time. And you can also find us on iTunes, Google Play, and Stitcher. And Crystal's looking up the nice person so we can thank them properly. Well, I'm trying to, but now <laughs> you've said something, so it's going to take me longer. <laughs> pressure, pressure. I know. Pressure. Don't fail, Crystal. Don't fail. Well, it's not me that's failing, it's our internet connection. Yeah, the wife, the wife, okay, we've had some bad weather in New Orleans uh, in the past 24 bit. hours. A yeah. little spot of it. You know, like half the city fucking flooded or something like that. It was pretty crazy. It uh, was. So our telecommunications right now are not in peak form. I'm just going to throw that out. But yes, we are... <laughs> Chris is making... I can't tell if you're motioning to me or the computer. The computer. Okay, the computer. It was uh, TJ Logan and it was episode 179, so the last one. Oh. I thought I'd uploaded that. Okay, I will double check. Yes. I will double check and post it. I apologize. Thanks, TJ. Thanks, TJ, for the heads up. <laughs> it's part of the process. It should go up, but, you know, things happen. Yeah. And I don't... I don't... I suppose to check it sometime afterward, and I don't always get around to it. I apologize. Oh, well, yeah. This is what happens when you don't have a Patreon. <laughs> <laughs> no, this is what happens when you don't have a regular schedule that you keep to do that. Or, you know, like the time to have a regular schedule. Yeah, because it's, it's been crazy busy here. Yes, it has. It's been, it was, the past couple weeks have been nuts. We're actually getting a little bit of a sigh of relief now with this show over. Yeah. Um, still a, and a month before the next one. Yeah, so you got a little time. Yeah. Emphasis on little. But anyways, it is episode 180. <laughs> yes. That is a number that is divisible by four. That means it is time to do the, the news. news. And we are in the news cycle that is literally as far away from Halloween as you can get. Yes. May 1st, as everyone knows, is halfway to Halloween. Yep. Uh, this uh, news cycle covers the past four weeks. So, yeah, it includes May 1st as a result of that. Yeah. But there's still a lot of interesting news to go over. We've got some great announcements from both Disney and Halloween Horror Nights. Mm -hmm. We've got some local haunt news and one very sad story, at least potentially sad story, that we're going to get to. But first things first, conference reminders ahoy. Um, I guess it's my turn to start it off. It is. Well, coming up May 17th through the 19th, it is the Ohio Halloween and Haunters Convention at the Ohio State Reformatory in Mansfield, Ohio. They'll be touring six different haunted attractions. The pre-show tour will include Hauntville, the Hudson House, and Haunted Hydro. During the weekend itself, they'll be touring Lessons in Fear, Blood Prison, Lessons in Fear, and Trail of Nightmares. There will be a Freaker's Ball costume party, a ghost hunt, and more. OhioHalloweenAndHauntersConvention.com for more details. Yes, and it, it looks like it's going to be a blast. Uh -huh. Okay, then June 7th through the 9th, it's Midwest Haunters Convention in Schaumburg, Illinois. Japes will be there, so if you're looking to meet him, say hi from us. Um, <coughs> Actually, just get up behind him real creepy like and go, <laughs> Jonathan and Crystal, say hi, and then walk away. 
<laughs> Are you starting to do that that creepy voice recording thing? That I don't know. I, I, yeah. <laughs> um, anyway, so that was Midwest Haunters <laughs> yeah, Convention, there was something Schaumburg, going on. Illinois. We were talking about something. <laughs> June seventh through the ninth, Renaissance Schaumburg convention center hotel it will be touring dead rising midnight terror massacre basement of the dead and hell's gate midwest haunters convention.com for more info yes indeed and like i said like we said say hi to japes i can testify that each and every one of those haunts is great it's not often i get to see a convention line up and go i've been to all of them yes they're good exactly you want to see them yes. and i can do that with this one yes <laughs> makes me happy thanks japes <laughs> okay <laughs> Then, coming up June 21st through the 23rd at the Oaks Campground in Munich, Michigan, it's Michigan Haunt Fest, featuring bacon takes, a capsite decorating contest, and a pancake breakfast. Some proceeds will go to benefit the Humane Society. MichiganHauntFest.Weebly.com for more details. Okay. July 27th, it is Haunter Horde <laughs> Gathering in Mount Carroll, Illinois at the Mount Carroll Bowling Center. They will be touring Raven's Grin Inn auctions for scares that care and don't be a monster will be going on yes uh free pizza you have to pay for your booze admission to <coughs> the party part is five dollars the tour of raven grin inn is an additional 15 yes, which sir, is 20 for the whole goddamn thing if you're in the area go fine we'll just start saying that it's 20 for everything just go to no, that. No, you got to separate it. Maybe you don't want to go on a tour. I know. Maybe you're some kind of hideous monster and don't want to go on a tour of Raven's Grin Inn. Why are you listening to this podcast if you don't want to go on a tour of Raven's Grin Inn? You are literally listening to the wrong podcast. Okay, so now that that rant's over, you can find out more at HaunterHorde.com. Yeah, yes, dear. <laughs> <laughs> I, will, I will stop ranting over your conference <laughs> reminders. <laughs> I don't know. It hasn't failed yet. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, the old adage about women, guys having to speak over women and all that. <sighs> that's just only true during conference reminders. Um, okay, after that, July 27th through the 28th at the Mesquite Convention Center in Mesquite, Texas, is the Texas Haunters Convention. It'll be featuring a meet and greet and a costume ball and a packed trade show floor from the looks of things. Mm -hmm. TexasHauntersConvention.com for more details. Okay, August 3rd through the 4th, it's Midsummer Scream in Long Eek. Beach, California. The Long Beach Convention Center, it features dozens of on-site haunted attractions and experiences, Hall of Shadows Dark Zone, as well as a screaming room, film festival, a show, fashion show, and live theatrical performances. MidsummerScream.org. One of these years we're going to get to that. Yes, we have to. And after that, August 6th through 8th in Nashville, Tennessee, it's the Room Escape Conference and tour at the Music City Center. They'll be touring up to eight different escape games. Well, actually, they have it. Sorry, my apologies. The show notes are wrong. They have not announced their escape game tours yet. So, dooby dooby doo, we just delete that because I don't want to screw that up next time. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, basically, you can learn more at roomescapeshow.com when that information is released. Yes. There you go. That went better. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and that's it for the conference reminders this week. Now, I have a bad sneeze going on. I'm trying <laughs> to get out. <coughs> it's then, probably because of magnets. <laughs> <laughs> How do they work? Oh, man. But anyways, like I said, we are about as far away from Halloween as we can get in our news cycle. So, yes, it has gotten uh, finally a little bit quieter. But then we've still got a lot to go over this week. Yeah. And we're starting it off with a story from Idaho Falls, Idaho. Mm -hmm. article by kpvi which that just rolls right off the tongue let me tell you yeah <coughs> that, the only tv station named after a losing scrabble hand <laughs> um poster stolen from idaho falls dare program facility uh, sometime on or around april 17th thieves stole movie posters from the front of planet doom a local haunted attraction which supports the lo local dare program mm -hmm. and i'm using the word local way too much <coughs> oh, excuse me. The posters were done in the style of the classic movie posters, like Frankenstein's Monster and all that. They were done to look like those posters. And Planet Doom, you might actually remember them on this podcast. Mm -hmm. They took over the old location operated by Dr. Slaughter, who was the D.A.R.E. program haunted house for 18 years prior. Right. So even though this is only their second season upcoming, they, they did it last year, the, um, the, the place has a 20-year haunted attraction history. Yeah. That's nothing to sneeze at. Not that I can sneeze. <laughs> <coughs> I 
I don't know why not. You cough. <coughs> My sneeze has transformed into an annoying cough. <laughs> but yes, police have no leads, but are investigating. Um, who the hell steals posters from in front of a haunted house? Uh, yeah, I know, and they do look really cool, but that's a really shitty thing to do. <clears throat> Especially, you know, considering that a lot of their, if not all of their, um, funding for D.A.R.E. program for that community is put on, is through this haunted house. Yeah. I mean, all of it comes from there. <clears throat> I guess that, that, damn, that sneeze, it just transformed. Yeah. Mm. But yeah. It, they looked really cool. I mean, yeah, okay. It's not the most expensive thing you can steal from a haunted house. I get it. It's more mm -hmm. annoying than anything at the end of the day. But well, considering it is a charity haunt, yeah, they are already operating on a limited budget because they are a charity haunt. Mm -hmm. I mean, all haunts are operating on a limited budget, let's be honest. Right. But the fact that you know their profits and proceeds do go to a non-profit function further tightens the belt. Yeah. <laughs> So, yeah, it's just, this is a dick thing to do. There's no way around it. It is, and I can't tell if this is like the, um, from the photo, if it's movie posters that are just prints or if it's like the Britannia does where they have an artist come in and draw, and hand paint their movie posters. Yeah. Because if these are original paintings, then Then it gets that's, even worse. That's yeah. even, yeah, that's it, harder they to seem replace. They to indicate it's prints. Yeah. But you're right, they don't actually say for certain which it is, and... Who steals posters anyways? I know. You could probably... If if they're just prints, I know I can find these online. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Go to eBay. Yeah. I was just there. Yeah. I might have bought another poster for Repo the Genetic. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I only own 10 copies. Terrence, if you are ever in New Orleans, please give us a shout. Please because... let us know. <laughs> Okay. Um, Apparently next... I have a very real problem is what it comes down <laughs> yes. to. Anyway, sorry. All right. Our next story is an article by Alan Campbell of the Richmond News. Uh, Richmond area haunted house could be shut down. And this is a home haunt that's operated for 35 years. It's run by Tim Jordan. Um, this is the first year that they've had any complaints from the neighbors. And basically he's got a bunch of tents set up in his yard and they um to put on this free haunted house yeah it's worth noting real fast this is richmond british columbia canada right which if you look at it on the map is just like spitting distance from seattle across the border in fact it's south of vancouver yeah it's between seattle and vancouver which i didn't know there was anything there right um yeah <laughs> Yeah, like finding out there's shit south of New Orleans, it kind of blows my mind even now. Yeah, it does, because that's not what they teach you in school. No, it isn't. But yeah, basically, he, he looks like, it, from the photos they showed, he has a bunch of tents in which he sets up rooms and right. things for a haunted attraction. And it's a free home haunt. Kids come and they see very different rooms. One's designed like a castle. One was an alien autopsy room. Yeah. Things like that. And... Apparently, they have one neighbor who is making repeated complaints. Yeah, and he doesn't know who it is because they, there's no one new in the neighborhood. Yeah, no one's talked to him personally either. No, which is kind of weird. <coughs> um, I would hope that our neighbors would feel comfortable yeah. enough to tell us, hey, we're kind of annoyed at this point. Please don't do it again. <laughs> or at the very least, can we do make these changes? Yeah, something. Or work out something. Yeah. I don't, because that's just it. I think, well, of course, he did it for 35 freaking years. Yeah. And, and suddenly there's a problem. You know, we've been doing it. Well, this will be our 15th. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things is, you know, we've hit a point where pretty much everyone in the neighborhood knows what we do. Yeah. Um, no one objects. Mm -hmm. Certainly not strong enough to go to um, the city authorities. Right. And we always have good, we have a very good rapport with the local police department, too. They they know yeah. what we do. They they do drive-bys of it. They know everything going on. They yeah. know when we shut down, all that stuff. So we've worked very hard on our, but this still scares the crap out of me. Well, yeah, because, I mean, this is, you know, Home Haunter's worst nightmare. 35 years, no one complaining, and suddenly, out of the blue, he's hammered by one random neighbor. Yeah. Yeah, and it's in the, he had 
been told to clean up his ar- yard previously yeah. this year. Um, and he admitted that had gone sideways. Yeah, he did, uh, due to deaths and multiple deaths in the family. And, and, and the illness of his wife, health, too. And, health, and, uh, yeah. Family health issues and personal issues. Yeah. But you know what? I understand that. <laughs> yeah. There's a reason why I don't jump on my neighbors who don't mow their lawn. Right. <laughs> exactly. Because you don't... <clears throat> Like, there's a house around the corner from us where the yard is pretty much up to my knees, but yeah. I don't give them any crap because they just got a brand new kid. Yeah. Another one. Yeah. I swear yeah. that woman's a baby-making factory if there ever was one. <laughs> yeah. I think she's had more kids than she's had years in that house. And she had her first one there. Yeah. Nothing wrong with that. Nothing That's wrong with they're... it. It's just, wow. Yeah. <laughs> Amazing work. <laughs> um... <laughs> But yeah, no, I'm not going to give them any crap because, you know, I know what they're going through. They're going through some shit and it's fine. Doesn't really hurt me in any appreciable way. Yeah. Um, But yeah, but here's where I want to give some kudos to the city a little bit. Right. The city basically seems to recognize that what he does is good. Yes. And they're trying to find a way to make it happen. Right. (laughs) They've um, given him advice to file for... yeah, Some kind it, of exception. Know, it's called a variance of use. Yeah. Um, the idea is basically he can apply for a variance that will allow him to keep his tents and allow him to keep his structures up so that he can continue working on it year round and open it at Halloween. Right. <clears throat> and, so so, and when you're getting advice on how to get around the city code from the city, right. that's a pretty strong indication the city wants you there. Yeah. And so that to me is the kudos moment of this. The city, right. even though he's obviously upset and obviously concerned yeah um the city does seem to be really trying to yeah. help him out yeah and he's hoping that they'll be able to come to some sort of amicable conclusion yeah. where he can keep doing this yes and i think given the way the city's talking it's likely yeah i uh, hope but knock on wood he he's done it for 35 years yeah i'm blown away at that me too um, but I do hope he's able to, well, he probably won't be able to do it 35 more. He won't. I'm sure yeah. Someone else may be able to continue it. Uh, maybe. Maybe. Who knows? People are living longer. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, um, he has said, though, that if he has to take down the tents, the storage of the stuff is so impractical, right. he would be forced us to shut down completely. Yeah. He's even offered to uh, put up a sprinkler system in the tents. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Which I would say price that before you do. <laughs> yeah. I actually pri- I actually did some work on that today because I've been thinking about a future episode. Right. About how much it costs to install a sprinkler system. Uh-huh. We could, our garage at about 600 square feet ish would be about $3,000 to install a sprinkler system in. Okay. Not too bad. Yeah. But still prohibitive. Yeah. For what we do. And, and basically, what the evidence I found shows is that if you need to put a sprinkler system in your haunt, what you do, Yes. Uh, you want to do it in a new construction. And I'll talk more about why maybe in a future episode. Okay. <laughs> but yeah, I would seriously uh, price that before you um, mm-hmm. make that offer because it can, can be very, very expensive, even in smaller structures. Yeah. Do that. Yeah. Right now we use the um, little hot spot um, one use fire extinguishers, fire extinguishers, which are as um, they're rated the same as like the small regular fire extinguishers right. um we looked into it it meets the fire marshal and so forth yeah. requirements here so and it works for us i mean i know we probably would be asked if we were inspected to get a full sprinkler system mm-hmm. but the counter is under the actual code as we understand we only have to be able to get water to any point in the garage right. and we can do that we actually have a hose long enough to do it and it's always primed and ready yeah so if there ever is a fire mm-hmm. we at least have a way to get water on it quickly yeah but anyway, so that's neither here nor there. I feel bad for this guy. Yeah. I hope it is sorted. And it, I was, something else that really warmed my heart, I went into some of the local Facebook groups mm. um, that were talking about this. Every single comment right down the road was super supportive. <laughs> He's a nice guy. Then pe- like three people mentioned, can we start a GoFundMe for him? Yeah. Just out of the blue. He wasn't, not him. Yeah. He wasn't in this. People were just like trying to throw him money without him even being there to ask for it or know about it. Yeah. He's clearly one of the most loved people in his neighborhood. And so that, that warms my cockles, man. I'm going to be honest. Yeah. It, it, as frustrating as it is, as much as this is my nightmare too, my, my cockles are warmed by the community's re- and the city's reaction. And yeah. yes, I'm going to keep saying cockles are warmed. I know. <laughs> I can tell. So here's uh, hoping that Tim here is able to turn it around. Yeah. 
All right, speaking of cities working with haunted attractions, mm -hmm. I want to put these two back to back for obvious reasons. Uh, zoning board approves variances for haunted house. Uh, this is an article by Alex Meyer in the Intelligencer, which is a hell of a name for a newspaper. Uh, but this is from Wheeling, West Virginia. The um, Boring Zone of Appeals approved a, a variance for an upcoming haunted house. Basically, a uh, gentleman by the name of Sean Cooley is uh, wanting to open up a haunted house in a currently vacant building. However, the uh, codes there would have required it to carry 51 parking spaces, but the property lacks enough room for that because of the way the street apparently has a weird curve or something. They tried to describe it. They said it was an S-style turn, which doesn't super help, which isn't super helpful. Yeah, in the picture, it <clears> looks <throat> like there's no room for parking. So basically, he said, hey, um, I need a variance for this. One neighbor showed up to express concerns about the attraction, but specifically was worried about the lack of parking and the lack of crowd control. Cooley promised to have two officers there at all times while open, which is fairly standard procedure to have at least one officer, the detail cop there, um, but also promised to have two, and noted that there were was ample parking in neighboring parking lots and the neighboring streets as well, because their opening times would be counter um, when other businesses would be open. Yeah. <laughs> which is true for most haunted houses, unless you've opened up a haunted house in a bar and strip club district. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no. Which, hmm, hang on a minute. <laughs> Let me stroke to go tea a minute on this idea. Yeah. Um, but so basically after he said that, the neighbor said, cool. And the variances were approved and he gets to move forward with opening. Yeah, except if you read the, the comments on it, not everybody is happy. Yeah. Donna, I'm looking at you. You're not happy about this, are you? <laughs> what? what does Donna say? Read Donna's comment. Well, she's yelling. I'm not going to yell. Okay, uh, please don't yell. I think it's stupid. Can't think of anything else better to do with the buildings. Just fix it up to ruin it. Go ahead. Nobody else can see your puzzled expression. Yeah, I, <laughs> I get that my puzzled expression doesn't come across. Fix, and... fix it up to just ruin it? Yes. What the, what the... I guess she's talking about distressing it after you fix it up. Does she know how haunted houses are built? Uh, probably not. Probably not. Yeah. Not many people do, it turns out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's really funny. We'll, we we go into... People go, oh, I bet you do all... How do you do all the work? How do you build it? Well, first you build a bunch of panels. Yeah. You know, whoa, whoa, what's a panel? Oh, yeah, you're a normie. We have to yeah, go... Yeah. We have to. We have to roll it back a little. Yeah. Um... God, um, you know, here's my counter argument to Donna. Uh -huh. Almost anything is better than a vacant building. Yeah, exactly. I mean, yeah. the only like the only thing worse than like a vacant building is a crack house, which is technically not vacant, I guess. Yeah. Um, you know what I mean? Like something like that. As long as a legal, successful business is operating out of it, it's better mm -hmm. than being vacant. Yeah. And that's and the owner of this property is going to sh Mr. Cooley. Is going to maintain it, right. work on it year round, have a presence there regularly, and that's going to prevent bigger problems with the building. Yeah, exactly. If the alternative, I mean, you may not, I don't know, and that's the other thing, what else are you going to do with a building like that? Your options are pretty limited. It's warehouse. Yeah, and it's in a weird area of yeah. town, and it's it's a weird shape, honestly. Yeah. It, it's just weird, which kind of makes it good for a haunt. Yeah. Be honest, it kind of works, but it's like, ugh. Lady, shut your trap. <laughs> <sighs> yeah. Um, okay. Anyway, <laughs> fucking dick sniffer. <laughs> okay, so, um, another yay, haunted houses are good yay. story, feel good story. Yeah, feel good story after I insult Donna into the ground. <laughs> I know. Now I feel bad for mentioning it. Oh, no, no, not I'm really. Glad you did. <laughs> not I'm really. Glad you I want to give a voice to the voiceless, that's what we're about, even when they're stupid. Yeah. Um, all right, so <laughs> God. visit Loudon's um, tourism Loud, council. How, how do you, is it Loudon's, Loudon's, Loud, I don't know. I think uh, it's Loudon. It's L-O-U-D-O-U-N, so y'all figure it out. <laughs> yeah, anyway, we'll October, which is in a oh, haunted house tradition there, yes. has won two annual tourism awards this year from the county of Loudon. And yeah, their, their tourism, tourism yeah. <laughs> their board. Yeah, um, it's owned by 
Arc of Loudon, an area nonprofit. It has 343 volunteers, um, do thousands of hours of work. Mm -hmm. Almost 11,000 hours of work. Yeah, to make this haunted house happen. Yeah, and they and had 17, over 17,000 guests last year. Yeah, it looks like a very so. popular, successful haunted house. Mm -hmm. They won two specific awards, as you noted. Right. <clears throat> they were recognized as both the annual event of the year mm -hmm. and the... Um, the uh, Tourism Award for the Dedication and, and the 2018 Tourism Action Award, which right. is given to contributions of nonprofits. Yes. Um, the Ark of Loudon is an organization that helps provide services to area children who are differently abled, mm -hmm. um, both providing specialist and funding school programs and stuff, stuff like that. It does a variety of stuff. This is its primary source of income. Yeah, they raised $2.3 million. Fuck me! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, fuck me. <laughs> okay, take it. You you didn't catch that. No, I didn't earlier. see that part when I was reviewing the story. Oh. Thought I'd read it all. Fuck me. That's a uh, lot. That's good though. That's really good. But fuck me. Okay, so maybe I didn't read it quite right in my little skim through. Mm. Uh, that's that's since it began. Oh, so. since it began. Okay. Yeah. Not this year. That Woo. would be awesome in one year. Yeah. About to say. <laughs> Those uh, those uh, kids in uh, Loudon, man, they are treated well. I just gave Jonathan a heart attack. It's okay. Two point three million in a year would be astounding for a haunt that size. For a charity haunt, for a yeah. Charity haunt that size. Holy Christ, that'd be huge. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm gonna need a beer after this. Now I'm gonna calm down. Lord of mercy. <laughs> All right, let's get now. We got two pairs of announcements: two from Universal and two from Disney. Right. So we're going to do those, and we got a couple fluffier pieces to end on. Okay. So we're, we're covering all your bases and getting your veggies, and then we're going to do some fun stuff at the end. <laughs> okay, first off, Halloween Horror Nights has announced another this another uh, new attraction for 2019. We're in the period where we get the drip feed of haunt news from Halloween right. Horror Nights. It's that time of year, um, and then that one... Has me excited as hell. Mm -hmm. It is Universal Monsters, i.e., they are looking to the classic Universal Monsters, uh, such as Wolfman, Dracula, and Frankenstein. Um, the other haunts previously announced were the Stranger Things haunt and the Gladiator-themed Blood Pit. Mm -hmm. um, and of course, it will run September sixth through November second. Tickets are on sale, and if you buy sometime before, I think it's like June fifth ish. Don't hold it to me. There's a deal where you get a day free. You get two, two for the price of one on days. Oh, if I lived in the area, that would be awesome. <laughs> That'd be great. I'd be all over that. Um, I've got to say, though, this really makes... This warms my cockles. <laughs> <laughs> no, this, this excites me so much because I am such a fan of the classic horror. Mm -hmm. This is something I grew up on. This is something I love. And I just... I, I'm a little behind on my Sven Gulli. Right. And apparently Sven Gulli has been fucking killing it lately, and I've been missing it. Did The Blob, Frankenstein, Bride of Frankenstein, and coming up next is Abbott and Costello meet Frankenstein. So mm -hmm. I've got some, some, I got some Sven Gulli to watch, and yeah. so do you probably. No, yeah, sounds like it. <laughs> if you don't, if you don't, if you get me TV and you've not seen Sven Gulli, I don't know what your problem is. I can't help you. <laughs> you you're dead to me. I mean, <laughs> okay, that's a slight exaggeration, but... <laughs> But still, check it out. It's awesome. And I'm, I got to go back and see those movies. So we got some Sven to catch up on. Okay. And the other announcement out of Universal is Halloween Horror Nights is going to conjure up holiday nightmares with their new Holidays in Hell. So, since Haunted Houses are doing holiday themes, why not Universal take it on too? Yeah. Um but they're not just doing one holiday. They're doing all, all of them. And one, well, it's a maze, technically. Yeah. Which is, what's, what's kind of weird about it, they did Holidays in Hell last year. Right. Um, but it was like a free roam zone. But it was a scare zone. And scare zones are open or, open or fucked. Yes. <laughs> Holy. Are more open. <laughs> wow. I just, well, meow. All right. They're more open. They're airier. They're kind of meant to be like free roam right. places where the interactions are more random. Mm-hmm. Um, but this is a maze which is tighter, constricted, more claustrophobic, and yeah. hopefully a little more confusing and disorienting. Yeah. So, one of the things that's interesting that I think 
is if you have a chance to go to Halloween and Horror Nights. Halloween and Horror Nights, yeah. Horror Nights. <laughs> and you are an owner of a haunt and planning on doing multiple holidays, mm -hmm. you could get some ideas. Yeah. And they actually have a little preview video. Yeah. Which is actually, they show clips from the Scare Zone last year. Right. So you can see some of the costumes. You can see some of the stuff they did. You can see, like, their creepy Easter bunny. You can see their uh, weird leprechauns. Cupid. Cupid, yeah, the 4th of July. Which I wouldn't have even thought of Cupid. Yeah, I don't know. But, you know, Cupid is kind of fucked up. I mean... No, I get it. He shoots people with a freaking bow when they're not yeah. looking. Yeah. And then, like, messes with their emotions. It is kind of messed up, you have to admit. I think that if Cupid went rabid, he would, like, start getting longer arrows to stick people together permanently. <clears throat> hmm. <laughs> I, I'm just reminded of the uh, the comic I saw, which showed a bunch of a bunch of deer like making out and having sex with Cupid arrows stuck in their butt, and Cupid's sitting there going, "Man, I'm so hungry." <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Wrong arrows, Cupid. <laughs> but no, I mean, and also there are videos on YouTube and elsewhere of the scare zone from last year because since it's a scare zone area, people are allowed to film, right? Or at least they're allowed to more allowed to film. I don't know how tolerated actually the rules are there but you you get more videos from scare zones than actual haunts right um so check them out and it looks like they're gonna be making it an indoor maze this year should be a lot of funny but they really did get i think every freaking holiday i can name yeah i do think it's interesting <coughs> that it's um that it's only during season you know this isn't something that they're going to keep going year round because since it's you know, got year-round holidays in it, mm. they could. I gotta say, if there's not a murderous tree for Arbor Day, <laughs> I'm very disappointed in them. <laughs> Worst haunt ever! <laughs> Minus. <laughs> yeah. It needs some crazy administrative assistants <laughs> running around, too. <laughs> well, you already you get your crazy nurses in most other haunts, so yeah. we got that one kind of done. What about, like, like parents or, like, mothers and father, mother, mother and father? Day? And we're recording on Mother's Day, so... Yeah, we are. So, you know, you got to get your mother and father day in. Yeah, I don't know about that one. <laughs> so, yeah. But, yeah, no, it looks awesome. The costumes mm -hmm. look great and the little promo video... One thing I do like is they have the, roughly the same shows, both in L.A. and in Orlando, mm -hmm. which makes reporting on it a hell of a lot easier as compared to Disney. Yeah. Um, which Disney, well, we have first two separate stories about Disney. The first deals with Disneyland in California, and the other deals with Disney World. Crystal will lead that one in when the, she, we get to it. Um, but yeah, Mickey's Halloween Party will not be in Disneyland next year. Instead, it will be retreating to the California Adventure Park, mm -hmm. and it will no longer be Mickey's Halloween Party. Yeah. It will be the Oogie Boogie Bash, a Disney Halloween Party. Which I think is an upgrade. I think the title is definitely a kick-ass for title kick. Oh my God, Jonathan. <laughs> I swear I've not had anything to drink tonight. I swear. No. <laughs> I, I'm still blaming magnets. <laughs> oh man, don't 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 play with magnets and surgery scars, kids. This is what happens to you. Yeah. Um, you begin to swear more and you slur your words everywhere. <laughs> um, but yeah, basically the the previously the Mickey's Halloween party was held in Disneyland, but now they're pulling it away, and the basic reason is because they're opening that new Star Wars park there. Right. And most people just think it's going to be a logistic nightmare to have both in the same place. Yeah, because Guardians of the Galaxy is a new ride that's opening, and it's just going to draw. They're expecting huge crowds for that. So, so they're moving that to California Adventure. will include a show called a live show called Villainous, um, Redwood Creek Challenge Trail, Immersive Treat Trails, Deca Deca Dance, a dance party, which got to be really careful how you say that yes. one. Yes. It's not the Dicky Dance. <laughs> it's not Southern Decadence. No. Um, they'll also have a Fright... I thought it was Descendance. Descend... Maybe it is. Because it's the Descendants. Oh! That does make sense. It's the Descendance. Yeah. I need to watch more Disney. <laughs> Yeah, I've forgotten about the Descendants. You're right. Yeah. Huh, that's such a kind of a clever pun. Yeah, it is. Still pretty freaking stupid, but at least it's clever <laughs> stupid. Which basically, that's the world I live in, is clever stupid. So, you know, I'm at home here. <laughs> yeah. 
Um, a frightfully fun parade. What the hell was a frightfully fun parade? <laughs> and Mickey, Mickey's trick and treat show, trick and treat show. It's important, not trick or treat. It's trick and treat, mm -hmm. and various character encounters. Like I said, the move is mostly because they're trying to make room over at I main Disneyland with the Star Wars and Guardians of the Galaxy and all the stuff they're doing there. They're just trying to make some room. Tickets are on sale right now. They went yeah. on sale May first. If you're interested in going, pick them up. Yes, and there's tons of candy. I can't. Uh, the article mentioned candy given out at least four times in four oh, yeah. different areas. So, yeah, if if you got a little one who's into trick or treating, um, they yeah. need a till pumpkin somewhere. Yeah, they do. They do. I, I agree. And they're the putting thing. out giant cauldrons of candy. And here's the thing: what I really do like this stuff because it is a more family friendly version of like Halloween Horror Nights. Yeah. <clears throat> the idea being, okay, your you, your kids are too scared, or you don't want to you know, go to Halloween Horror Nights. No. Here's a theme park experience that's for Halloween. Still spooky, still, you know, ha Halloween-ish, but... Has characters, uh, villain meetups and stuff. But it's not going to be all in on trying to scare you. It's it's focusing more on the spooky than the scary. Yeah. Spooky. Is it spooky scary? <laughs> <laughs> yes. And only Crystal's going to get that joke. <laughs> Probably. If anyone else does, let us know. No. Hot Weekly on Twitter, Hot Weekly on Facebook. If you got that joke, I feel very bad for you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, now from Disney World, they have confirmed that they are killing their Hallow Wishes fireworks display. This is a story from Ken Story at Orlando Weekly. Um, basically... They're not going to do their regular fireworks. They haven't announced what it is. They haven't announced the name. Right. But they described it as featuring state-of-the-art projection effects, lasers, lighting, and dazzling fireworks. Yeah. Which is not very fucking useful, Disney. No, and I'm not sure exactly how that differs because I don't, I don't know the original, so I don't know how this is different. Yeah. As someone that's never seen the Hallow Wishes one, I, I don't know. I've never been to Disney World for Halloween. No. I've never been to Disney World. Yeah. So. I know, and that's, that's something I keep threatening to rectify and keep failing to. Yeah. Um, and at this point, who really cares? Um, <laughs> <clears throat> but the uh, new show will feature Mickey, Minnie, Donald, and Goofy entering a haunted house where they right. will face skeletons, ghosts, and Disney villains. Hmm. Where the hell is this haunted house? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, but other key features, such as the Hocus Pocus villain, Spelltacular, yeah. uh -huh, Mickey's Boo to You Parade, and Trick or Treating Trails will return. Once again, mentioning the candy. Yes. All in on the candy here. Yes. Um, yes. We will give your kids candy. Lots and lots of candy. We promise candy will happen if you come. Um, yeah. Basically seems to be the whole sales pitch, which is not necessarily a bad one. No. I wonder if it's like the kitty mix. Yeah candy and the the reason i say that is because i'm thinking that that doesn't have any peanut allergies or maybe other allergens in it because you think with disney they would have to like make sure not to kill kids <laughs> <laughs> i don't know six flags killed several in a fire and then <laughs> that happened a while ago and, and regulations have changed <laughs> but but no I'm, I'm just wondering how they're gonna how they do that yeah that is interesting um and but yeah, the thing here is, though, at Disney World in Orlando, yes, the firework display is going to be different. And, yeah. and one thing I've learned in reading these Disney articles is just how many hardcore Disney nerds there are in the world oh, that really glom onto this stuff. Uh -huh. It's like, eh, it's going to be a pretty firework display. I don't yeah, really. exactly. <clears throat> I don't really care. It's I, I, I see fireworks like twice a year tops. You know, I have no investment in this. Yeah. If that. If, and that's usually me accidentally running into them. Yeah. Um, yeah. Occasionally, they will. There will randomly be fireworks in New Orleans. Yeah. We have a we have a parade culture. You yeah. can't really avoid parades, but you can avoid fireworks in this city pretty easily. Yeah. But regardless, um, the, the, there are a lot of people like, oh, they're getting rid of Hallow Wishes and replacing it with something else, and it's like, okay. No. Had no idea this was important, but like twelve sites covered it. So apparently it's important to someone. Yeah. I mean, I get why the other story was big. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> because that really sucks. I mean, I get why they're doing it. It makes sense. But it still sucks. As a Halloween lover, it's like, wow, we're getting relegated to second tier. And it's a double reminder just how small our industry is. 
Yeah. That we're getting the boot from Disneyland because of Star Wars. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah, no. Kind of, kind of kicking the teeth, but, but you know, it, it's still, I, I don't get it myself. Yeah. If you hope, I hope someone, I hope the Disney fans out there understand it better. All right. So some fun stories for the close out here. First one, a Lego, a, a Reddit user by the name of Cream Coek, Cream Cream Coek, K R E I M K O E K has created a giant Lego haunted mansion that is just awesome. Yeah, it looks really cool. I mean, A, it looks really good on the outside. Yeah. The outside looks really bitchin', but inside is where the magic is because he's created a whole bunch of rooms themed around different films. Yeah. It's everything from The Exorcist, The Evil Dead, The Shining, Scooby-Doo, Gremlins, and more. I mean... Yeah. And it's it's kind of fun because he posted this video on Reddit, and you can check it out in the article we're linking to. This is by Julie... Muncie at io9 um but you can kind of play you know spot the uh movie a little bit with it yeah and that's what i did is i actually didn't read this part of the notes because usually what i do for newsweeks is i open the article and just read it and then see if there's anything i want to add to the notes um but so that's what i did was i i went to the article and said oh there's a video let me click it (laughs) so so then i did the the play the play the what is this and i'm like oh there's the Necronomicon. Yeah, that's, that's Evil Dead. That's yeah, Evil Dead. Yes. Yeah. There's a the, um, there's a guy with an axe. That's The Shining, and in the in the red bar, that's yeah. The Shining. Yeah. yeah. You, you can play that, and it's really a lot of fun to do that in this video if you're a mm-hmm. horror buff. But it like has silly stuff too, like Scooby Doo and Gremlins and yeah. all that. It's not just hardcore horror. No. There were a couple I couldn't quite pull what movie it was. Yeah. There's one I thought it was Beetlejuice, but I'm pretty sure it's not Beetlejuice. No, I don't know. I don't know. It's weird. Anyways, y'all figure it out. Enjoy the video. Seriously, it is well worth the time and attention. Mm -hmm. And finally, this week, as usual, with Newsweek, we might wrap up a couple of minutes early. Not too bad, though. No. Um, We have to give a shout out to Mike Ross at Haunt Chat. Yes, the grave digger himself. The grave digger. Reverend Michael has a bobblehead. Yes, (laughs) Yes, <laughs> that's the news. That's the news. Oh, good night, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> yes, um, in Haunt Chat, he posted a video. video of it and photos of it, and he's put it on other places, too, that you can find. Yeah, we'll link to the actual video from Haunt Chat. Yeah. But, yeah, personally, I just kind of always thought he was a bobblehead. <laughs> and... <laughs> that's you. I mean, you know, he, he's always moving and bouncing around. <laughs> That's a stir. It, it is kind of appropriate he gets a bobblehead. <laughs> Very animated. If nothing else, you know, whenever he's on Haunt Chat, if he needs to get like, a restroom break, he can sit there and just tap the head and let it bounce its head up and down <laughs> and you go use the bathroom and come back. It'd be very handy. Yes, yes, I'm listening. Uh-huh, uh-huh. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Keep going. Please keep talking. Please keep talking. <laughs> be really useful on Wednesday sometimes. <laughs> yeah. Which we may try to get Yeah, on. we got to get back on that rhythm. We've had a, some off-kilter weeks because of the show. Right. I've been working every night after yeah. work. And that has been making it impossible for us to get on. But we're going to have to make amends. Now we got at least an iota of breathing room. Because we've been following the, the group. Right. And been seeing some of the projects y'all been working on. Yeah. Projects and weird conversation things that are going on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we need to get caught up. Yeah, basically. apparently we need to get caught up on this season of On Chat. <laughs> In this past two weeks of On Chat. <laughs> what the hell y'all happening. doing? <laughs> what the hell y'all doing? Yeah. Yeah, but seriously, it, it looks like a cool bobblehead. I'm ho- shoot, I forgot who he said it was by, and it's not in the notes. No. no. Hang on a second. He actually put it. I'm on you. You opened up a tab. I'm Once gonna, uh, again, it's struggling with. Yeah, the, uh... we're battling Wi-Fi. We're battling <laughs> technology, and we're losing badly. Yeah. Um, okay, I think I've almost got it. Oh come on! A little what? tease. Um, okay. And it is by. Do <laughs> yeah no. Um, where the... Mind Trap Creations. Yes, Mind Trap Creations. Thank you. You're welcome. I was gonna get there eventually. I promise you. <clears throat> that's, yep. I've, so that's what it is it's mind trap creations they did the bobblehead it looks awesome it looks like yep. a lot of fun seriously mike it looks cool mm-hmm. um well on that anything else to add uh, any further news anything like that no <clears throat> anything we missed oh that's good that means we're getting better at this <laughs> <laughs> 
Well, on that note, everyone, thank you very much for spending the past 45 minutes or so with us. We greatly appreciate your time. Um, this has been Haunt Weekly, episode 180, doing the news for April and May. This is You can find us at hauntweekly.com, Haunt Weekly on Twitter, Haunt Weekly on Facebook, tinyurl.com slash hauntweekly is our YouTube channel. We will fix episode 179 when we put up this episode, I mm -hmm. promise. And you can also find us on Google, iTunes, Google Play, iTunes, Stitcher, blah, 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 all that good stuff, too. So until next time, I'm Jonathan. I'm Crystal. And we will see you guys next week.